The year is 1944. The world is at war. The Nazi war machine has rampaged across Europe, leaving devastation. Countries have been crushed under tyranny. The very soul of freedom is at stake. The Allies prepare to strike back at Normandy, France, the prize a foothold in Nazi-occupied Europe. The stage was set for Operation Overlord, better known as D-Day, a colossal undertaking involving hundreds of thousands of troops. The fate of millions rested on the brave men storming Normandy. The seeds of D-Day were sown in the minds of brilliant military strategists like Dwight D. Eisenhower, Bernard Montgomery, and Omar Bradley. They knew a direct assault on Europe was inevitable, but the where and how were fiercely debated. Normandy, with its relatively weak defenses, emerged as the prime target. The English Channel posed a formidable obstacle. Landing troops on a fortified coastline under enemy fire seemed impossible. Yet Allied planners toiled tirelessly, studying maps and rehearsing scenarios. They developed solutions to overcome logistical challenges. Artificial harbors, codenamed Mulberries, would be towed across the channel. Specialized tanks, Hobart's Funnies, were designed for beach defenses. A vast air armada would soften German defenses and provide air cover. While the logistical preparations were underway, another crucial aspect of the D-Day plan was being meticulously crafted, deception. The Allies knew that maintaining the element of surprise was paramount to success. To this end, they launched a sophisticated campaign of misinformation, codenamed Operation Fortitude, designed to mislead the Germans about the true location and timing of the invasion. Dummy landing craft were assembled along the English coast, fake radio transmissions were staged, and inflatable tanks were strategically positioned to create the illusion of a massive buildup of forces poised to strike at the Pas de Calais region. The success of Operation Fortitude would prove crucial in securing the element of surprise on D-Day and catching the German defenders off guard. June 5th, 1944. The air hung heavy with anticipation and dread. In the pre-dawn darkness, thousands of Allied troops boarded their landing craft, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and determination. The fate of the free world rested on their young shoulders. The invasion, initially scheduled for June 5th, had been postponed by 24 hours due to bad weather. Just after midnight, paratroopers from the US 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions, along with British and Canadian airborne troops, were dropped behind enemy lines, tasked with securing key bridges and disrupting German communications and reinforcements. Their mission to sow chaos and confusion behind enemy lines, paving the way for the main landings at dawn. As the first rays of sunlight pierced through the pre-dawn darkness, the full might of the Allied Armada appeared on the horizon. Thousands of ships from mighty battleships to humble landing craft stretched as far as the eye could see. At 6.30 a.m., the deafening roar of naval guns shattered the morning calm. Operation Overlord, the largest amphibious invasion in history, had begun. The Allied troops, under a hail of enemy fire, stormed the beaches of Normandy, codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. Omaha Beach, assigned to the U.S. 1st and 29th Infantry Divisions, proved to be the deadliest of all the landing sites. The Germans, entrenched in heavily fortified bunkers overlooking the beach, unleashed a murderous barrage of machine gun fire, mortar shells, and artillery. The Americans, pinned down on the beach, suffered heavy casualties, but they fought on with incredible courage and determination, inch by bloody inch, gradually gaining a foothold on the heavily defended bluffs. At Utah Beach, the U.S. 4th Infantry Division faced lighter resistance than anticipated, thanks in part to the successful misdirection of Operation Fortitude. Despite being pushed off course, they quickly regrouped, adapted to the changing situation, and pushed inland, securing their objectives. The British and Canadian landings at Gold, Juno, and Sword Beaches were met with fierce resistance. Heavy fighting raged throughout the day as the Allies fought to establish a secure beachhead and push inland. The sound of gunfire, the explosions of artillery shells, and the cries of the wounded filled the air. Casualties were heavy on all sides. The beaches were littered with the bodies of fallen soldiers, both Allied and German. 
medics worked tirelessly, tending to the wounded under constant threat of enemy fire. Despite the horrors they witnessed, the Allied troops displayed remarkable courage and resilience, driven by a shared determination to liberate Europe from Nazi tyranny. As night fell, the Allies had successfully landed on all five beaches, but their hold on Normandy was tenuous at best. They had established a foothold, but the battle was far from over. The Germans, though initially caught off guard by the invasion, were regrouping and launching fierce counterattacks. The days and weeks after the landings were a brutal test of endurance. The Allies faced fierce resistance, fighting tirelessly to expand their beachhead. Every village and town became a battleground. Despite heavy casualties, the Allies gradually gained the upper hand. Reinforcements bolstered their numbers and firepower. By late July, the Allies captured Caen after weeks of heavy fighting. By late August, Paris was liberated and the German army was in full retreat. The successful Allied invasion of Normandy marked a turning point in World War II, alongside the previous Battle of Midway and Battle of Stalingrad. It established a crucial second front in Western Europe, relieving pressure on the Soviet Union. The liberation of France was a tremendous morale boost for the Allied forces and the occupied peoples of Europe. The D-Day landings also had a profound psychological impact on both sides. For the Allies, it demonstrated their unwavering resolve to defeat Nazi Germany and liberate Europe from tyranny. For the Germans, it shattered the aura of invincibility that had surrounded their military and marked the beginning of the end of Hitler's regime. The D-Day landings stand as a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who fought for freedom. The courage and sacrifice of the Allied soldiers in Operation Overlord should never be forgotten. D-Day reminds us of the fragility of peace and the importance of international cooperation. And the lessons from those sacrifices must guide us in the 21st century. D-Day is a symbol of hope, courage, and the triumph of freedom over oppression.